Well, here we are beginning the first full week of our Lenten pilgrimage. It's a good time to ask ourselves, what am I hoping for during this period? Where do I want to be spiritually come Easter? What does the Lord want for me? Today's first reading from Leviticus says, You shall be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now, admittedly, this is pretty hard in our hectic world. Daily, we are bombarded with tragedies. The newspapers present stories of war and injustice. Our mail, brings requests for assistance for the homeless, for Covenant House, for cancer research, for various illnesses. Television and radio remind us of natural disasters that increasingly seem to assault our fragile world. We consider ourselves lucky when these things are not happening to us and our loved ones. But do we try to respond out of Christian charity when we see a need. The needs are overwhelming. Many of us suffer from compassion fatigue. Charitable organizations complain about donor fatigue. A resistance builds up to the constant demands for assistance. In the face of so many tragedies, we feel helpless and become tired of caring. We may even stop seeing the needs and fail to recognize when others cry out for help. Think, for example, of how often we do not even notice the homeless in our cities. But it's not just cities nowadays, it's even towns and small villages that experience homelessness. Or think about how quickly we forget those who have been displaced by hurricanes and floods. We may respond generously at first, but the need continues for a long time. But a life of holiness requires that we overcome this compassion fatigue, this donor fatigue. Since God is holy, we must be holy. We must live in constant attention to opportunities for goodness. Each day holds countless chances to respond to our neighbors in love and justice. For when we grow tired of it, our call is still to holiness and compassion. One of the ways I've dealt with um, encountering homelessness when I walk downtown is I decide ahead of time how much I can afford to give that day. And I'll put X number of loonies into my pocket. And I don't question, I give as people ask. And then when I run out, that's it for the day but at least I give something. Would compassion fatigue cause us to turn our backs on someone we dearly love? Would it cause us to turn our backs on Jesus? Well, of course not. The gospel points out that every good deed done to a fellow human being is done to Christ himself. Christ means that when he says that to us. We have to take him seriously. And every failure to respond to a need is a failure to respond to Christ. We must transcend our fatigue and be vigilant for opportunities to serve, lest we miss the face of Jesus in the needy. To overcome compassion fatigue, donor fatigue, those who deal with sickness, tragedy, and disasters on a daily basis are advised regularly to reassess what is important to them. For Christians, this is the exact purpose and nature of Lent. This is our time to reevaluate our priorities and rededicate ourselves to lives of Christian service. So during this Lenten season, let us ask the Lord to take our hearts of stone and replace them with hearts of flesh. Let us pray for an attitude adjustment that we will take on the heart and mind of Jesus in our world today. And now we stand and we hold up to our loving God some of the prayers and intentions we'd like to remember in today's Eucharist. We pray for missionaries throughout the world 
May they bring comfort and peace to those who do not know the love of Jesus. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for government leaders. May their efforts on behalf of the least of their citizens bring well-being to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the unemployed, the underemployed, may they find the work or assistance they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord on this day, we, we pray for the sick. This is the World Day of the Sick. We pray for all our sick beloved ones. We pray for family and uh, members of our communities. But especially, we pray for all those dedicated to helping and serving the sick in our midst. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And we take a moment to, in the privacy of our own hearts and minds, formulate prayers that we would like to bring to God's altar at this time. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Father, in confidence, we bring you the needs of your people Hear and answer our prayers according to your will, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash me from my sinfulness, make me worthy to enter and truly celebrate these sacred mysteries of your great love for all of God's people. Thank you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord, may this offering of our love be acceptable to you. Let it transform our lives and bring us your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Each year you give us this holy season when we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. You give us a spirit of loving reverence for you, our Father, and of willing service to our neighbor. As we recall the great events that gave us new life in Christ, you bring the image of your Son to perfection within us. And so with the angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, Plenis Uncelli Etera, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, Qui Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. 